Okay, we'll start today's press conference. We have the national championship coach, Paul Klempa, up there. We'll open the floor for questions. Uh, for, to, for this group, I'll start with Andrew Ward from Channel 8. Hey, Coach, how are you doing? Good, Andrew. How are you? Thank you. Good. Good. That's a nice flex you got there with the, the trophy. Thanks. Uh, so you, this is your first title. Obviously, you learned a lot from, from Bill during his time here. What, what, what did this one mean to you personally? Well, you really, you know, back like in 2004 when we won the first NCAA National Championship, I remember remarking that, you know, you only get one chance at your first one. And I guess this is the same thing. I mean, it's my first full season. Last year we got cut short. Um, so to be able to win it in the first year is a real blessing. I mean, and probably a monkey off the back too because, you know, there's probably going to be people wondering, is the, is the program going to stay as good as it was without Bill? Because that guy was good, you know. And so to be able to win it is just a blessing. You said the monkey's off your back. Did you feel any pressure at all going into this then? Well, I mean, I didn't feel like we had to win for anything particular, but the monkey on the back is just, you know, validating that, that Bill Moose made the right hire and that I'm capable of following up Bill Straub and continuing with the tradition. And I feel like we, you know, that kind of validates that uh, we're on the right track here. Dan Corey? Hi, Coach. Hi, Coach. Congratulations. Congratulations. Um, Thank you. Uh, another national championship for this program. When people say uh, Nebraska is a bowling school, uh, what does that make you think of? And, uh, you know, what does it mean to kind of carry on the national championship tradition at Nebraska? I know the volleyball team is doing really well right now, but w what does this mean for the for the university? Well, I mean, like I, I remarked when we won that, you know, I really felt good about bringing this home for Husker Nation and our athletic department in particular with, you know, what a hellish year we just went through with COVID. It's really nice to be able to bring something home that we can all celebrate. You know, we have no illusions that this, that this national championship is, is equivalent to, you know, football or one of the large revenue generating sports. But, you know, if we can do our part to this, make some people feel good and give them something to celebrate, you know, it's worth it. And it feels real good to do so. And I'll say this too, that we also, you know, even though we are a smaller sport, we have a really good, you know, uh, large group of people that follow us. Um, they're like a cult following of bowlers all over the world. And then we've flipped throughout the years that Bill and I have been doing this, we've flipped many naysayers about bowling. We've flipped them. And now they, instead of picking on it as not a sport and it doesn't matter if we win, they now follow us and can't wait for the show and they get into it. So... We've flipped a lot of people's opinions. There's still plenty out there that'll tell you that it doesn't matter. It's not a sport, but we flipped enough of them. We got a pretty good brand going, and people are excited for us. And uh, so we feel good about it. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. Abby Barmore. Coach, this season you had to battle through adversity, not only in the tournament after losing the first round game, but also with the pandemic and COVID testing. Does this national championship, does this victory, you know, feel sweeter after all of this adversity that you had to face this season? I would say absolutely. I mean, to have to put up with all that and at the end of it get this prize, yeah, it feels real good. I mean, for us to, you know, we lost our opportunity to compete in the fall that we normally would, which is a pretty important time for us to kind of figure out what our team's all about, who's who, where should be, who should be playing where, who should be playing, who shouldn't be playing, all that stuff. We had five tournaments in the regular season instead of the normal nine or ten. So we only had five that were all jumped up. You know, they were all bundled up between January and the end of March and to figure out which end was up with this group. And every week we got better. Every tournament we got better. And, you know, we never won a tournament throughout the year, but we led several of the qualifyings in them. Formats are a little goofy where, you know, you can lead the qualifying and dominate all the way through, but then lose late and they give the trophy to somebody else. So we had been dominant in a couple of our last two tournaments. And then um, we knew we had a pop at this one because we had just kept getting better every tournament. And so we went into the national championship real confident in our group. And uh, thankfully, we were able to show it and it played out. I told them after, after our final event in Arkansas, I said, you didn't win this one, but just save that win because you got one more to go and let's go win the one that really matters. And that's just what we did. Clark Coach, um, 
you lose that first match. I mean, what are you thinking at that point, and what are you telling the girls? That was kind of a uh, the first match. I mean, we're a two seed. We lose to the 15 seed. I mean, they were motivated. They were excited to be there. They had nothing to lose. We were. We had some young people that had never been to this scale of an event before. They were nervous. Um, but you know, it was from that the beginning of that match, and then after we lost that match, there was a miscommunication with our bus driver. He wasn't there to take us to lunch. So we had to walk a couple blocks to find food in the rain. Um, we had to sit outside on the wet concrete to eat our lunch. It was a comedy of errors that got so ridiculous that I told the team, I don't know why things are the way they are at the moment, but we don't deserve it to be this bad. And it's got to be a joke. It's the universe's joke on us. So I said, just let's just stay cool. Let's just be still and we'll go from here and just turn the page and move on. And we had a tough match in the afternoon that we, we got through. And then, sure enough, it was true. The university kind of flipped, and we started getting better, and then there was no looking back. But, yeah, that Wednesday morning was just – it wasn't just losing to the, to the 15 seed. Everything was going wrong. So, you know, you have a choice to either kind of overreact to it or underreact. I, I underreacted because I'm like, this is not the way it really should be. It's going to get better. It has to. We're way too prepared. We're way too ready to be here for it to go this lousy. So we just didn't take it that seriously. It's just sports, one of those things. And I'm glad that's how we looked at it because, sure enough, as we went forward, it, it, it flipped the way it should. Nick Vanderford. Hey, Coach. Hey, so you kind of touched on this already, but can you just kind of – um, describe or kind of encapsulate what this season was for you guys. Um, and now you have the big prize or some things that um, you kind of want to improve on for next year or um, uh, some things that um, maybe you see that uh, could take this program uh, even further as you go along, as you uh, continue to build the program. Well, it's a good question. I mean, that's, you know, we've been enjoying this the last few days, but before we came here, um, my assistant Shannon Plahowski and I both sat for, a while in my office and started saying, I mean, we wrote down at the top, how do we repeat? And what, what did we, what didn't we do well this week? Cause there was plenty. I mean, you know, they always say winning cures everything and that's true, but reality, you take a step back. There was a lot of things we could have done better as a group. And so we started listing the things we could do better. And so those are the areas that we're going to continue working on through this summer and especially next fall when we resume full practices. Those are going to be the main areas that we, that we hammer on because there's plenty of things physically and emotionally that we could have done better um, in spite of the fact that we won. So, I mean, you get, I mean, if you're going to repeat, you know, things really went the way they're, they have to to win. It's hard. But you can't go in figuring you can make all those same mistakes and things will take care of themselves because they won't. We've only went back to back one time and it's hard. You know, usually there's a few years in between these, and I'm trying to make it to where it doesn't have to be. Abby Barber? Um, what did it mean to you to be able to be honored at the Nebraska baseball game and to celebrate your victory in person with Husker fans? It was awesome. I love Husker fans. They're so cool. I'm telling you, I love baseball. I love the baseball program here. I always have. I'm a season ticket holder. I follow them and I watch them and I go to the games. I'm a big Red Sox fan. I love baseball. I love it every as much as, as I do bowling. And so for the baseball program to, you know, have us out there Sunday, that was a very cool experience because we it's not like we were home for a day and then they called us. We're coming from celebrating all night long in Kansas City, piling on the bus and driving straight to Haymarket Park. And so we're piling off that bus with our national championship gear still on, the trophy in hand. We walked in Haymarket Park like we owned the place. Husker fans were cheering left and right for us as we walked through. Everybody's tapping the trophy and wanting pictures with it. And then they took us out in the field and they gave us a standing ovation. You know, they've done that for us through the years at Memorial Stadium, man. Husker fans are awesome. You know, they don't care if you're pitching quarters or what you're doing. If you win, they got your back, and I like that. Any other questions for Coach Clumper? Just put them in the chat. 
Okay, well, in the session with Coach Kumpel, then it's next up we'll have assistant coach Shannon Pudowski, we'll have Cassidy Ray and Michelle Goro after that. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.